Hey guys, welcome back to part 8 of my Discord.py series. So today we're going to be finishing up our tic-tac-toe block. Okay, so let's get started. So last time I've made some mistakes. Last time I had turn as equal to 0. In reality, it should be equal to 1. And also the current player is actually supposed to be at 2. Because um, for what we're doing right here, for current player modded by 2, we actually wanted to start at 0 plus 1, which is player 1. So when you mod something, you take the remainder of it, right? So 2 mod by 2. 2 goes into 2 evenly, so there's no remainder. So it's 0. 0 plus 1 is 1, so player is 1 turn. And then we increment 2 every time we finish a turn, right? So 2 becomes 3, so yeah. So yeah, these are just the mistakes I made last time. So please change this into a 2 and change this into a 1. Okay, so let's get started with today. So today we're going to be working on the reactions that we got last time. So last time we had something like this, right? Where we had the user's reaction and what they can move down here. But we didn't implement like getting the user's reaction. So now we're going to be doing that today. So right here, we're checking first to see if it's the stop symbol. If it's not the stop symbol, we want to move on and have an else statement, right? So if we move on, we then have another if statement in here checking which player it is, right? So if current player modded by two is even, so there's no remainders left, that means that it's player's one turn, right? So it's currently player's one turn, right? So what we want to do next is that we want to have a little function. So in this function, we're going to be looking through what um, reaction that the player reacted to and using that to calculate their moves, right? Okay, so let's make a new function down here called make moves. So what do we want from this make move? So we want the reaction or the emojis that the user selected. We also want the emojis list, right? So this list of emojis that we will be taking stuff out of it, we're going to be calling it emojis list inside of this function, right? We also want the current player. So whatever player this is, it doesn't have to be player one or player two um, specifically. Um, it can just be either player, right? We also want the board itself because we are going to be modifying this board. So the first thing we're going to do is that we need to find out where the player made their move, right? So in the board, which is a three by three, the player can make a move anywhere in spot number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, right? Or the stop button. So we want to check which one the player has reacted with. So let's say if the player reacted with number one, we know that it's in the zero th index, right? So number one is the first item inside of this list. So we want to find out which index it is, right? So we loop through the index of the range. So right here, we'll loop and find the index and we'll find it using the range, which starts from zero. So to define the range, we're going to be using the length of the um, reaction emoji, so our constants. This reactions list will not change at all. We're not going to be modifying or removing anything from this list, right? So we can use this as a baseline to see which index it is. So down here, let's go back down here. So we're going to be looping through and looking for which index it is, right? And then we have to search for the index. So we have an if statement here, and we're going to see at this uh, reaction emoji, right? So once we find whatever this is, and since this is a list, we will then access it using the square brackets notation. And inside the square bracket notation, we can then use the index that we're looping through. We put the index in there. And what do we want to get out of this list? We want to check if this list is equal to the emoji that we're looking for. So if it is equal to the emoji that we're looking for, we then have to modify the board, right? Because in our board here, which is full of blanks, we want to replace these with the player's character, right? So we, so we go down here, we use the board. So how do we know where in the board we want to do this, right? So remember, we got the index from over here. So in this board, we want to call the index and we want to switch out the blank value equal to the player. After that, we want to remove the selected emoji from our emoji list, right? Because we don't want multiple users to be making the same move, so we have to remove it. The way we remove it is that in Python, a list has a built-in method called remove. So we just call the list that we're using and we call dot remove on it. And what do we want to remove? We want to remove the emoji, right? So we just give it the emoji, which is a string. It will look for it inside of this list and then remove it from this list. So once we do find the emoji that we're looking for, we don't need to loop through it anymore. So let's say we're looking for number one. We don't want to have to wait for the program to finish looping through everything else to find our emoji. No, we just want to loop through this one. So once we find our uh, chosen emoji, which is this statement, if statement. So if this if statement triggers, we just want to break out of this function and stop looping, right? So let's go back up here and let's call our make move function. And then what, what do we want to pass into it? So we want to pass in the reaction emoji that the user inputted, right? That we waited for up here. Then we want to pass in the emojis list that we currently have up here, right? So we can access it and modify it, right? After that, we also pass in the player, the current player, and we also pass in the board. Now we also need another case where if it's 
player two, right? So this else statement basically means that if it's not this, it will just do this, right? So we would take in the reaction emoji again, the emoji to this, and then player two, and also the board. So what we're doing here is that we're actually going to clean up this message, right? So as you see up here, we sent out two messages. So we sent out a uh, whose turn it is, and then we also print out the board, right? We don't want this to be still be there when the next user goes. So we have to clean it up. So we call await ctx channel, and then we purge it, right? And then how many messages do we want to purge? So we only want one to purge two, so we set a limit of two. Okay, so now that we've finished with that and getting the moves for the user and cleaning up the chat a little bit, we then want to check for the winner, right? So we are making a winner variable. And for that winner variable, we're going to be calling check win again from up here. And we're going to pass it the same stuff, right? We're going to pass the player one, player two, and the board itself. And that should return to us either blank or a winner. So then we want to check that winner variable that we just made. And we want to check and make sure it's not blank. So if it's not blank, that means someone has won. So once someone has won, that basically means that we send out a winning message. And then we ask them if they want to play again, right? So first we have an F string. And we say that whatever player wants. So let's say player. And let's use the curly braces, which inside of an F string means that you're accessing a variable. And inside this variable, we're going to be calling the little formula that we developed above, which is the current player plus one modified two. So yeah, we're going to call that. And basically that will check if it's uh, check the remainder of this and add one to if it has a remainder or not. So then we're going to say that they have one, right? But also we want to ask them if they want to play again. So instead of sending two messages, we can just add a new line with the escape sequence backslash n. And then we just ask them if they want to play again, right? So an easy way to see if the user wants to play again or not is to use emojis, right? So we just send out a message. And we print out the board, right? Which with the same items, which is player one, player two, and the board itself, right? We're calling the print board function that we wrote, wrote before. And we're going to be assigning this to a message, right? Because we want to add um, emojis to it. So we need to assign it as a variable. So we're going to be adding a reaction, which is a little check mark for playing again, or a little X mark for not playing. Again. So you can find these two emojis in uh, Emojipedia. Just look up a check mark and look up a X button, right? After that, we want to wait for the user, right? So we're doing the same thing again. We're doing bot.wait for. And we're going to look for the um, reaction add event. We have 30 second time limit, and then we're using the same check that we uh, developed all the way up here, right? So after that, we're going to pull out the reactions and the users from this await command. After that, we're going to check this reaction, right? We're going to check if it's equal to the check mark. If it is equal to the check mark, we will then reset our two lists, right? So remember, we have two lists. We have a board, then we also have the emojis that the user can react to. But remember, as the user makes their move, these emojis get removed from the list, right? Down here, where we call emojis list.remove, we're removing those emojis, right? So basically what we're doing here is that we're resetting it to its initial state. So we're going to reset the board into its original state, right? Which is all blank. Then we're going to reset the turn, which is equal to zero. So the reason we'd set turn and current player equals to one less than themselves is because down here, we are incrementing them after, right? So we always increment um, the current player and the turn. So we want them to set them one less than what we want it to be. So let's say you want your players to be flip-flopping around, right? So let's say if player one wins the game, you want player two to go. If you want to do that, you would just change this number into a two, right? But for now, let's just keep the original order that they're going. So player one goes first and player two goes second. So yeah, after that, we then purge this, right? So how many do we purge it by? How many messages do we send out? We sent out one to ask, telling them that they won. And we also sent out a message of the board itself, right? So we will purge it with a limit of two, right? Because we only sent out two messages. After that, we also have an else statement. So let's say if the user doesn't want to play again, we want to thank them for playing our game, right? So if the user doesn't want to play again, we still purge these two message, but we leave a message behind for them. We want to thank them. So we want to do ctx.send and we're going to send out a thank you message. So thank you for playing tic-tac-toe, right? But remember, there's two ways for the games to end. So in our walk loop, there's two ways for the game to end, right? One is if a winner has won and the next is if the turn exceeds nine. So basically now we want to check if the turn has equal to nine or exceeded it, right? So when we want to do an else of statement with the turns as the condition and we want to check if it's greater than or equal to nine. If it is greater than or equal to nine, we then tell the user that it's a tie, right? And then we also want to add a new line and ask them if they would like to play again. So we do the same thing as we do up here and we send out the same board. We then store that message and we add two emojis to it, right? So we had a check mark and an X mark. We would then, would then wait for the user's reaction and we pull out the users and the reaction from it. We then check which one the user reacted to. If it's a check mark, 
we then reset it, the initial state and we reset the turn and the current player. And then we purge it, same thing as above. Next, we also then do an else statement where we just purge it and then thank them for playing if they don't choose to play again, right? So let's test out our code. So let's see it, let's run it and see if it works, right? So let's print it out. So let's see it here and let me clear this board right now, right? So let's call a game. As you can see here, the bot asks us which game we want to play. So we want to play tic-tac-toe, right? So let's pick an emoji. Let's pick this video game emoji and let's pick another different emoji. Go down here and let's pick this code face, right? So right now, we deleted those two messages where we asked what our emoji is. And now the bot is adding a reaction to see where we want to go, right? So let's say we want to go to one. So right now it's player's one turn, right? So we add the game controller there. Let's say now it's player's two turn. Let's say we want to go into the fifth position. So we click the five button and now player two is there, right? Cool, right? So now let's test if winning works, right? So player one is currently in the lead. So let's give player two right here to number six, right there. Okay, so now for player one, uh, we can just, just go right here and then we win, right? As you can see down here, every time we go, it removes the current thing from this list. So we have less options as we go on, right? So let's click three. And as you can see right there, it says that we have one. The game controller is player one, right? Also, it asks us if we want to play or not. Let's click yes, we want to play again. So right here, um, it's just asking us what we want to do as player one. And let's say we want to go to five, right? The middle. Now for player two, let's say we want to go to number one and let's have a tie, right? Let's just keep playing until we have a tie. As you can see right here, now that we have a tie, it, it says that it's a tie and would we want to play it again? So let's play it again and let's check to see if our stop button works, right? So let's just stop it and let's see what happens. It, so once we stop it, it just automatically says that it's a tie, right? So no one won, no one does anything. Let's check. Now that we know that our stop button works, let's check if we want to play again. Let's click no and it should delete everything and it should say thank you for playing with XC. Right. So as you can see, the little bug right here is that when we don't want to play anymore and we end the turn, basically that will leave this board up here, right? So what we want to do is that we want to go into our code. So what we want to do is that we want to go into our code. And once the user pushes this, we want to have it purge two up, right? And let's test our discord, right? Let's type in clear five. So let's clear five up, right? So now let's call games. Let's pick tic-tac-toe and let's react with whatever emoji we want to, right? So these two. Now let's wait for the um, reactions to get added and let's click the close button, right? So once we click this, it should manually delete this and it should just ask us if we want to play again and it should print out the final board. Let's say we don't want to print play again. We would, it would then delete these two messages and just leave us with a thank you. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.